Thanksgiving Day, our plan was to go over to Vicky's sister's house to have dinner. Vicky's job was to bring Ohio State cookies for the game this weekend, but there was only one problem. The seat in the 64 is covered in dog hair. So I took some flack for that, but once she got her seat cleaned up, she loaded up her cookies and it was time to head to Paige's. Turkey time. Vicky's mom and Vicky's sister only live about 15 minutes from our house. Both of them live on the same road about eight houses down from one another. And every year we all get together Thanksgiving and Christmas, and there's quite a few people there, usually Paige and Jim's family and our family, and everything's pretty normal until we show up. Inevitably, part of our Thanksgiving celebration takes place out in the driveway. And since Tommy and Allison brought the dart over, Vicky's mom wanted to go check the thing out for herself for the first time in person. We all had a pretty decent dinner that night, and then Friday, it's right back to the grindstone for us out in the shop. The plan is for today to take all the parts for the 421 up to Bob's. So we load that stuff in the back of the dually and then shove the Malibu outside so that we can pull a 64 in and start draining the coolant out of it. Because when I come back from Bob's, I plan on bringing the 400 small block back off the dyno so we can start putting it in tonight. So we throw a drain pan underneath of it, crack the petcock on the radiator, and then we jump in the dually to head up to Bob's. Me, Jeremy, and Junpo. Our usual route up to Bob's takes us right up through Granville, and evidently, the day after Thanksgiving is the day everybody in Granville goes to get their Christmas trees up at Ten Buck Farms. We passed at least a dozen Christmas trees headed south as we head north up to Mount Vernon. I had talked to Bob earlier in the morning, and he told me he would be there bright and early regardless that it was Black Friday. When we pulled in, Bob was cleaning out and organizing the assembly room so he could get started on my 421. So I need to get Vicky's 400 small block off the dyno today and get it out of his way so he can get started on the 421 and we can hopefully get it put on the dyno next week. So Jeremy and I dive right in and get the water pump and the headers, the carburetor, and everything disconnected so we can separate the engine from the dyno and roll it out where we can get to it with a shop crane. The next thing we need to do is get the belt housing and the flywheel removed off the back of the engine and then bolt the engine to an engine cradle so that we can set it on the back of the dually and haul it home. It was about this time that I got a text message from Kenny Powers telling me that he's going to be headed to the shop very soon and he's going to start pulling the engine out of the truck while we're up at Bob's getting this engine loaded up. So that should help save us a little bit of time and hopefully allow us to get the new engine set down in the truck and at least get the bell housing bolts put in it and get it set down on the engine mounts. When we got there, Kenny had already pulled the carburetor and the exhaust manifolds off and was almost ready to start on the bell housing bolts. Meanwhile, me and June Pup go out back to get in the John Deere and start getting ready to unload the engine off the back of the dually. The engine cradle that I'm using came from Jigs and it comes with a set of wheels that you can bolt on so that once you get the engine back at the shop, you can just roll it around wherever you need to go with it. Anyway, now that we're all together back to shop, we go ahead and put the 64 up on the lift and Vicky brings home pizza for everybody for lunch. Every Friday, she does shop lunch for everybody and makes sure that nobody goes home hungry on payday. After we all got a bite to eat, Jeremy and Kenny got started pulling the belt housing and torque converter bolts out of the 64, and then it was time to set the truck back on the ground and pull the little 350 up out of the engine bay. Since the old engine definitely had a few little oil leaks, we decided to pull a 64 out of the shop with the John Deere and pull it out close to the house so we could reach it with a garden hose so we can degrease the engine bay and get everything cleaned up before we set the new engine down in the truck. Kenny went ahead and put the old engine on an engine stand so we could get it cleaned up and Jeremy left to go down to Mark's to get parts to tune up his truck before he leaves to pick up mom and dad's truck in Indiana tomorrow. You got my spark plugs. Well, I'm working on it. What the? It changed up when we are a spill pipe. Oh, it's some organization you got there. Well, you know, we have a hard time putting stuff back up in the right spot. So what? Uh, what else you got? Oh, yeah. your this. Oh yeah. Your what? what the? F genuine AC Delco filler. What the hell is that? Well, it's it's quad lingual. You got one with the regular AC Delco box. That is. This is the new new and improved AC Delco box. So we it. Don't have no nut ching chong writing on there, does it? No, I don't think so. Just the box. As I suppose they're sold in many locations. I suppose everybody's got to have a Chevy to get something done. All Jeremy has to do is make a simple trip to Indiana to pick up a truck for mom and dad. But before he can leave, 
he must do maintenance. All right, we got my spark plugs. You sure yep. you got my spark plugs? Yeah, well, I There's, got six. I've got to find two more. Well, I've got an eight cylinder, so that's I know, not I got to find two more. They're they're here somewhere. I, they probably put them someplace. I, I got to go fetch them. Oh, good grief. You ain't found them yet. I'm still looking. Jeez. Would you quit? Good I'm, grief. I'm, they like to burn them. Yeah, I'll just you, drive there on six cylinders instead of eight. Just say to be more fuel efficient. Didn't I call you a couple of days ago to remind you? No, no. I'm pretty sure you I did. You just called me this morning. It's a second reminder. I'm missing four. I'll find them. I'll be back. What do you do? A run to advanced? No. They're back. You're telling me you don't have spark plugs for a 92 I've Chevy? I've got plugs, just not enough. <laughs> I'll bring them when? Oh, here in a little bit. I leave at 5 a.m. Oh, I'll be there in plenty of time. The whole time he's down there kicking Mark in the nuts, Kenny and I have been at the shop waiting on him to come back with some bolts. Where in the hell have you been? Oh, your Nugget Buddy Parts guy down there. Nugget Buddy Parts guy? I was going to say Nugget, but... Oh, there you go. Thanks. Now I got something else to edit out. I ordered parts this morning before we left to go up to Bob's. Figured it'd be cool. I'll just roll in at the end of the day, pick up my parts, service my truck. He had six spark plugs, four quarts of oil. I needed eight spark plugs. I needed five quarts of oil. But he's got a stockpile of 400 parts for you. Anything you want for a 400. He's got it? Oh, he's got it. He just don't have spark plugs for a 350. After I got done kicking Jeremy in the nuts for taking three hours to kick Mark in the nuts, it looks to me like Vicky's up to something that's going to kick me in the nuts because anytime she's got a tape measure in her hand, it's bad news for me. I just do my best to ignore whatever she's doing and concentrate on helping the guys get this engine set down in the 64. But eventually, I couldn't ignore it any longer. Whatever she's doing, evidently I'm the last to know. So there's going to be a Christmas tree out here and we're just trying to figure out where it goes and where I want it to go, I kind of want to put a backdrop, a little plastic scene, you know, those little wall scenes that goes behind it. <laughs> so I went to get online to look at the little scenes that go behind your tree. They're cheap, don't worry, like 15 bucks, but like there's 30 to pick from, so <laughs> trying to figure out what one I want. I've got a sneaking suspicion that all that footage I showed her of everybody getting Christmas trees at Tim Buck Farms has inspired Vicky to cause me some more grief out in my shop. The Christmas tree itself is no big deal. It's this backdrop she wants to put up. That's where the Nitrous Express banner hangs. Well, we'll just move it for this month. And it'll be a snowman with a tree. Thanksgiving always marks the time where Vicky starts putting up Christmas decorations, and it just so happens to coincide with the annual disappearance of all my extension cords. But anyway, we managed to get the engine set down in 64, and Jeremy had to go home to start working on his pickup. You know, he's got this big trip scheduled for tomorrow, and he's got to do maintenance on his pickup truck before he leaves for Indiana. So when I picked this truck up, it had about, I'd say, at least a nine year sleep. I'd say at least, maybe not that much, but I'm not sure. But I know it's been a lot because I owned it for probably two or three years before I pulled it up out of the fence row and picked it up. So, but, so here's the slumber plugs. I never changed them. I got this thing running and I drove it and then we started doing the videos and it just kind of, slipped my mind but before i go pick up dad's truck here's what they look like and once i get them all out i'll take a group photo i get the feeling when jeremy goes down to work on stuff at his shop he does more than drink coffee so here's two four six and eight a little crusty and here's one three five and seven of my nine to ten year slumber plugs, drag it out of the fence row and drive the hell out of it. All this just so he can make a three and a half hour drive one way to pick up a half ton pickup truck and haul it home. So that's what Jeremy's up to first thing Saturday morning. Meanwhile, Kenny and I are out in the shop starting to get things cleaned up and ready to put this engine back together in the 64. 
Kenny was busy polishing all the chrome and pieces and repainting the water pump since we're going to reuse the one we had on the 350. So we plan on working on that stuff out in the shop while we watch Ohio State and Michigan play in the horseshoe. That wasn't much fun, by the way. Jeremy, however, has already made it to the Ohio State line, and he's headed to see a buddy of mine over in Indiana that collects box nose Chevy pickup trucks. If you've ever heard of the YouTube channel Young and Boosted, well, this is Sam's dad, Pete Walsh, and I've had my eye on this two-tone blue 1980 half-ton two-wheel drive Scottsdale pickup truck for over a year. It's an early 1980 with round headlights, and it came from North Dakota. With only 78,000 miles on the odometer, the truck is 90% rust-free and in very good all-original condition. So Jeremy picks up the truck over in Indiana, and by the time he gets it back to Ohio to our shop, I'm almost done putting the 64 back together. I just needed a little bit of help getting the air conditioning put on and bolting the hood back on. Once we got it fired up, I made a few minor adjustments to the Holley carburetor, put the air filter back on, and it was time for Vicky and I to take this thing out for its very first test drive with the new 400 small block. You can definitely tell when the truck shifts gears, it's got a lot more torque than it had before. And when you stand on the throttle, it definitely accelerates faster than it ever has. But Vicky's favorite part of this whole deal is that the truck carries 80 pounds of oil pressure going up the road, 40 at an idle, and she likes how it sounds. Once we got back to the house, Vicki wanted me to come in and check out all the Christmas decorations she's been putting up. She started on the front porch, but now it's in her office and all over the inside of the living room, she's got Christmas decorations going up galore and that stupid Chinese snowman's back. So between putting up all her Christmas decorations and her new engine in her 64, Vicky's happy. But now it's time for mom and dad to come down and check out this pickup truck that they have yet to lay eyes on, at least in person. They've seen pictures and videos of it, but they haven't yet seen it firsthand. Now I've been talking to Pete about buying this truck for almost a year because it's my favorite color combination and one of my favorite body styles. But this fall, when we were working on running beans up at the farm, Dad took a ride with me in the 64 to watch Jeremy run the combine out in the field. Since Dad can't get around too well after his open heart, he noticed how easy it was for him to get in and out of the 64 compared to his newer Chevy pickup truck. And I think that got Dad's wheels turning in his head as to what he might spend his bean money on this year. Years ago, my dad had a 77 half-ton two-wheel drive pickup truck, almost identical to the one that he just bought. And if it weren't for the fact that the truck was rusted out so bad, he'd probably still be driving it today. And although his newer Chevy pickup truck is really nice, it's hard for mom and dad to get in and out of it because it sits so high. And rather than go in debt for another new pickup truck, he'd rather just have another old one, like the one he used to have and he's always been partial to things that come from the Dakotas. Mom and dad have driven out west to pick up and bring back antique cars and trucks on numerous occasions. Usually, they find stuff out there is a little bit better shape and pretty much rust free. So they were pretty excited to find one like this so close to home. We finished up out in the shop late Saturday night and then Sunday, Vicky's back at it again. She's finishing up decorating the Christmas tree and getting the turkey ready for dinner tonight. While she's in the house working on that stuff, I decided to take mom and dad's new truck down the road for a little test drive to check out the steering, the brakes, the exhaust system, and see if there's anything this truck needs before mom and dad takes it down the road themselves. The old Chevy drives just as quiet and as tight as anything you would expect to drive with only 78,000 original miles on it. Outside of the fact that it does not have power brakes, and the blower motor squeals like a stuck pig, the little truck drives absolutely phenomenal. Other than maybe needing a new set of shocks and a good detailing, the truck is in really, really nice shape. So I bring it back, park it in the driveway, and bring the 64 back in so I can go over it real quick before everybody shows up tonight for dinner. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, really happy with the engine in Vicky's truck. Uh, runs good, sounds good. I've only got a couple little problems. Uh, one, I can't get the ignition timing right where I want it. Unfortunately, when I put the bypass hoses on this intake manifold, 
one of the um, 90 degree fittings sticks up right where the vacuum advance pod uh, hangs off the side of the distributor and it doesn't allow me to put the distributor right where I want it and it definitely doesn't look right like I don't like having my distributor sitting in there crooked like that so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put an MSD box in this thing and an MSD distributor uh, and kind of get rid of that HEI they're just a they're very simple. They're a very inexpensive ignition system. One wire makes it run. It's very simple. But um, I think I need to have a little bit better ignition system for this engine. It ran really good on the dyno. I know it made plenty of power on the dyno. And I haven't yet seen that yet because I can't, I can't get the ignition timing where it needs to be. It's uh, a little bit lazy in the truck. And I can tell by the way it drives it just i can't get enough ignition timing in it um, so we're going to work on that maybe a little bit this week but uncle bob uh and i are going to start working on the engine for the malibu this week we need to get that 421 put together get it on the dyno run it make sure it's okay and we're going to bring it back here and put it in the malibu so i can get it ready for pri so that's the number one thing on my agenda for this week uh and i'll probably be up at the machine shop tomorrow uh, helping Bob. Uh, we'll try and get that engine put together and get it on the dyno and fired up. Uh, meanwhile, while I'm up here working on uh, the 421, I think I'm going to have Kenny and Jeremy work on mom and dad's old blue Chevy pickup out here. Uh, it still has the original shock absorbers on it when I drove it today. Uh, I can definitely tell it probably needs shocks. Um, it really needs cleaned up underneath. It's just been a work truck for since the day it was new. Uh, it's either been on a ranch or it's been on a job site, one or the other. There's a lot of mud uh, up on the firewall and the inner fenders and uh, up underneath the truck. It's very clean as far as rust, but up underneath the truck, it needs cleaned up and detailed. So I think I'm going to have Kenny Powers and Jeremy work on that this week. I'll call Mark and uh, get some gaskets on the way. I know it's got some pretty uh, serious oil leaks on the transmission and on the engine as well. So I want to get that stuff taken care of. Uh, obviously with the winter here, we're not going to be driving that truck or mom and dad's not going to be driving that truck uh, anytime soon on a regular basis. But I want to get started on it so when springtime rolls around, that truck's ready to go. If they want to go to some tractor shows or whatever they want to do, I want to get the air conditioning uh, serviced and charged and get the engine serviced just get it all straightened up for mom and dad. Clean it up and detail it. Uh, obviously, it needs a dash pad. I'd like to maybe put some new door panels and stuff like that and clean it up inside. Eventually, I'll get that seat cover off this week and see what the original seat looks like underneath that uh, seat cover. Uh, if the seat needs reupholstered, maybe get that done. We can work on some of that stuff this winter while we can't do much of anything else. Now, obviously, we've got plenty to do. It's probably going to be well after PRI, probably well after Christmas before we get back on the on the 55 hot and heavy. But we'll just have to wait and see how things go. So that's going to about do it for this weekend, guys. I uh, hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. We'll be back to work tomorrow up at the machine shop, and Kenny and Jeremy will be working on Mom and Dad's blue pickup they just picked up. And we're going to start getting that Malibu put back together so we can take it to PRI. Good night, everybody.